This is Jen with Unicorn Riot. Since December of 2019, graduate student teaching assistants at the University of California, Santa Cruz, have been on strike, first withholding undergraduate grades, and now they're teaching labor from their employer, UCSC. From the very beginning, I've been active in organizing both at the university at UCSC and in town in Santa Cruz in general. That was Yulia, a fourth year PhD candidate in film and digital media at UCSC. She agreed to speak with me about the conditions that sparked the strike. The same group of people and a bunch of other organizers in town organized a mutual aid campaign for a homeless encampment in Santa Cruz to support massive, embattled, houseless population in town. Because with our cost of living and cost of rent, our houseless population continues to grow and the town is not supporting them. The cost of rent and cost of living are exorbitant. So even in 2018, we knew that this contract is not gonna serve us. We're not gonna be able to survive on this. Recognizing how untenable this financial situation is. This campaign that we started organizing that focused on on on-campus housing became this one singular demand for COLA, for a cost of living adjustment for all graduate students, regardless of where they live, regardless of their citizenship status, regardless of their anything for all graduate students. We all need to be paid more. Yulia told me that although 83% of voting members agreed the 2018 contract was unacceptable, the UAW undemocratically passed the contract through anyways and settled with the university. For about a year afterwards, a group of organizers tried to overturn the contract and go back to the bargaining table. When the effort failed, UC graduate students began to put together a Santa Cruz-specific campaign for a cost of living adjustment to their rate of pay. So a wildcat strike means that a group of workers in contract strike without union leadership authorizing the strike. The way the strike was called for was in an email chain by a group of rank and file workers who weren't active in the campaign, who were not active in the union, who were just in such a desperate situation that at some point they said, "Uh, I think we should strike. I think it's time to withhold our labor. And if we don't get more money, we are not giving grades. And so that's one of the slogans of the campaign. No COLA, no grades. And COLA stands for cost of living adjustment. So people started calling for a strike, and that's what we ended up doing. Twelve graduate students, including Yulia, ran for student government positions last year. They all ran on the COLA for All platform, and they all won. Yulia detailed how the strike escalated, as well as how UCSC chose to respond. First, threats of discipline, then by firing striking workers. So we started this strike with a grading strike. We withheld grades in December. And then when we were first threatened with discipline, um, as a response to that threat, we escalated our grading strike to a full teaching strike. So we withheld our teaching labor as well as the grades. The very first response that we received after we went on strike was a threat of discipline. Then we received uh, written warnings Then about 80 people were terminated from their spring employment, which for them, well, for us, um, means loss of health insurance and also loss of tuition waiver. The administration is trying to suppress the strike and break the strike rather than resolve the issue. Graduate students like Yulia conduct research at UCSC. She presents at conferences and publishes her findings. It's clear she's affiliated with the university, and her work is an asset to UCSC. Yulia explained that the University of California waives the quarterly tuition for its graduate students, so long as they are employed by the university. 
UCSC now expects their grad student X workers to pay back tuition costs that had been previously waived because of their employee status. They've also lost access to their health care. On top of that, there's another hurdle entirely for international students like Yulia. Not being able to pay tuition means that our student status may be jeopardized. And as long as I'm on a student visa, that may mean that I would get deported. If I fail to remain a student, I can't stay in the country. So this extra financial burden that is put on us by um, termination for a lot of people may mean deportation. The majority of people who received student conduct summonses and charges are people of color, are undocumented students, are people from marginalized groups who already experience precarity that brought us to striking in the first place. So the university is targeting and doubling down on those who they promised to support, on those who they recruited, saying, we value diversity and we will take care of you. The labor union had originally insisted the TAs had to wait two years to renegotiate their contract. The success of the strike has since pushed the labor union to adopt the COLA framework and demand the university returns to the bargaining table, a reversal of its previous position. On the 19th of February, over 80% of UCSC Faculty Senate voted in support of higher wages for grads. I asked Yulia about the impact of this vote and what other support strikers have seen from UCSC students and faculty. We had a physical picket line at the base of campus, sort of at the entrance to the university. Most of the time we were outnumbered by our students. Undergrads were at the picket every day by hundreds. It was really incredible and they, this movement would not have been possible without them and without their support. Um, whenever we needed to rally or march or shut campus down, like block the roads with our bodies, undergrads were there. They were in the front lines. And we have seen faculty support at the picket every single day. On day one, faculty marched down with banners, with signs and posters that said, faculty for COLA, we love and support you. They marched to join the picket in full academic regalia. And they were there with us, participating in direct action, chanting and picketing. And that was just incredible to see. And then a few days later, we had a very intense standoff with the cops. Uh, UCSC deployed police from out of town and out of county. And at some point, over 100 police officers in riot gear were at a standoff with unarmed students engaged in civil disobedience and direct action. And faculty were so enraged by this heavy police response that they put their bodies literally between the students and the police. We had a line of faculty who protected us with their bodies. So that was such a powerful moment. And we're so grateful for not just solidarity, but faculty's physical presence at the picket and their, their physical like defense of us. That physical picket line ended earlier this month, but not because the strike is over. UCSC, along with other universities across the country, has shut down their campus to protect students, teaching staff, and other university employees from the spread of COVID-19, the highly infectious coronavirus. I asked Yulia how the sudden shutdown of UCSC campus has impacted the organizing strategy of the strikers, and what TAs are doing to get more creative now that the physical picket has ended. You know, I think the interesting part of the strike is that it, it began with an email. I don't think it will end with an email, but, um, yeah, digital space has been really crucial for organizing this campaign and this strike. 
So uh, we do, we really build robust digital infrastructure that I think is going to be um, maybe become even more uh, nuanced and detailed. Um, I imagine a lot of collective writing. I imagine a lot of meme making, meetings over Zoom and Skype. I think we may work on our social media more and the website. Um, but yeah, actually memes and emails have been really effective in engaging undergrads and engaging the broader community and communicating with faculty as well. So yeah, we actually went on Twitter and started soliciting cola memes for a new meme gallery. Yulia said that Santa Cruz is one of the most expensive cities to live in across the country. I asked her what the university needed to do to end the labor strike. I think the university needs to come to the table and bargain. We want this to end. We don't want to strike for the sake of striking. We want to return to work. We want to teach our students. We want to do our research. But we also want to survive. No one is striking because we want a lavish life. We want to be able to afford to live where we work. That's what an employer has to provide to its workers. Like it's, I think it only makes sense that we at least need to be paid enough to live where we work. But right now we can't afford basic needs. We can't afford shelter and food. A lot of people skip meals. A lot of people are housing insecure. A lot of people forego medical procedures because they can't afford to go see a doctor. Other campuses who joined the strike very quickly also bear the brunt of an exorbitant cost of living. And every other UC campus has a COLA campaign and they're organizing in solidarity, but also for their own COLAs. She mentioned that other nationwide members of UAW, United Auto Workers, have been vocal about their support. They've written heartening letters, ordered pizzas for organizers' meetings, and have generally recognized TA's struggle as their struggle. Everyone who lives paycheck from paycheck can absolutely relate to the struggle, whether or not they have to do with the university or academia. Having support of the auto workers has been something I did not originally expect. And I think it had a tremendous impact on everyone's morale. <laughs> As we were wrapping up, I asked Yulia if there's anything else she wanted our listeners to know. If a group of workers under contract comes to the table and tells the employer, we have this agreement, but it doesn't work for us. And I think it's time for us to renegotiate. I think it strengthens collective bargaining. I think for us to be so organized to maintain the strike is a sign that it's a very strong tactic. And the union is going to be in a stronger position to bargain the next round, to bargain for a new contract when the time comes. One of the slogans of the campaign has been spread the strike. And so I kind of want to end on that. I want the strike to spread and I want to see other graduate student workers and other low-waged workers across the country and across the world come together and build their collective power and demand better. We have seen COLA spreading, spreading across the country. Um, I don't know how, um, how secret that is, but we are going to see other universities and other workers go on a COLA strike, from what I can tell, very, very soon. And we're hoping that all students and low-wage workers organize and demand better. 
Everyone deserves a cola, and everyone deserves a dignified life. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this content, remember to like and share in your circles. If you're able, consider making a donation to Unicorn Riot. All donations are tax deductible and help to support more content like this. The music used in this production is by Podington Bear, Luke Pigot, and Costa T. This media is published under the non-commercial, share-alike, with attribution, 3.0 Creative Commons license.